Zoom's breakout feature is maybe the main reason why I love this platform, but I've always had a long wish list of um, features I was hoping to see one day. And this week, actually just yesterday, Zoom updated their uh, desktop client and three amazing new features have been added for anyone hosting virtual workshops, meetings, gatherings. And in this video, I will first share how do you set them up, how they work, and number two, how I will plan to use this feature to hopefully create some more engaging, transformational, and memorable virtual experiences. So uh, we're going to jump right into the first feature, which is sharing audio and video to breakout rooms. And um, before I show you how this works, I have some bad news. Uh, it's not what I was hoping for. Here's what I was hoping for. I was hoping for uh, being able to share just some music to breakout rooms as, for example, at the end of an activity to signal that it's time to come back, smoothen the transition back to the main room. But unfortunately, that is not the case. But the feature still is really exciting. So let me show you how it works. So uh, first of all, we need to open up some breakout rooms. Uh, so I'll just create a breakout room, open it up, move that over to the side. And now that your participants are in breakout rooms, we can use this new feature by clicking share screen. Um, I know I'm kind of hiding behind here, so I'm just going to pop up on the bottom here. Um, when you are sharing your screen, you now will see at the bottom bar this option that says share to breakout rooms. And this is not necessarily a new feature that has been there for a while. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit closer. Like down here, this checkbox has been there for a while and we were able to share our slides to breakout rooms with additional instructions, all of that. But now you can also share videos uh, and you can share sound. So this checkbox on the left here is now uh, you can now use, and let me just show you again here, if I was, for example, sharing a video to breakout rooms, I can check this box, which was not available before. And I can share sound. So what does that mean? I can now, when participants are in a breakout room, play a video and everybody will be able to see and hear it. And when I stop sharing, they are still in the breakout room. Um, if you have some ideas on how you might be using this in your um, in your sessions, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what ideas you have. Here is how I think I might be using this for. Um, yes, I was hoping for it to be just audio. So unfortunately, that's not the case. So the idea of creating a transition from the breakout room activity to back to the main room is maybe not going to work if I also have to share video because I find that a little bit disruptive. Um, but if I have a large group and I want uh, people to watch a video in small groups and then have a conversation about it right away, rather than showing it in the main room, then sending them to the breakout room and bringing them back, that might be a faster way to do it. Um, but yes, I'm still waiting if Zoom, if you're watching to allow me to share just my voice, just some music so I can communicate with breakout rooms a little bit easier. So great new feature, but still some room for improvement. Um, now this next thing, the second update, I'm actually much more excited about because I'll be using that a lot. Uh, and this is automatically excluding co-hosts from breakout rooms. Um, and to show you how this works, I first have to uh, join as with another device here. So give me one second and apologize for the feedback. I was not quick enough with my finger on the mute button. Um, for this to work, we need some co-hosts in this meeting. So I just joined from my phone down here. And um, the way it works is simply once you click the breakout room button and we're gonna recreate some new ones. Again, I'm going to zoom in a bit, pop up over here. We now have this new option over here that says include co-hosts in breakout rooms that can also check off. 
And this basically means if I now include co-hosts in breakout rooms, click recreate, this, uh, my phone account will be added. If I uncheck it, let's just create a couple new rooms to see how the difference looks like, they will not be added. And this is super exciting for anyone who's hosting um, meetings with a lot of breakout rooms, with a lot of co-hosts, where before I used to rename my co-host so I can find them quicker, uh, then look through each room and then take the checkbox off. So I would have to look through all of the rooms, find them uh, by their name, and then uncheck this box to get them to come back to the main room. And that was a lot of work. And especially if you have a very large meeting, let's say you are dealing with um, almost 100 attendees or more, and you have 50 breakout rooms, they will start collapsing. So you can't even find somebody quickly. And if you're in a rush, this is going to save so much, so much time. Um, this really is a big time saver, uh, which I'm very excited for my um, my team who actually supports facilitators with Zoom tech in the background, uh, they will love this because now they can quickly assign all of the important people as co-hosts and then uncheck the, the box so they don't get added by accident. Um, all right. The third feature we have coming up also for the breakout rooms, there have been so many new exciting things about breakout rooms, is saving the assignments of breakout rooms. And again, it took me a little bit and a little chat with Zoom support to figure out how this actually works and what the, the benefit of that is. So let me show you again and I'll open up some breakout rooms and let's say I assign this co-host to room one. That's the only person that I have here right now. Um, this is maybe a constellation. Whoops, where did I go there? Uh, this is maybe a constellation you want to save for a future meeting. Let's say you have the same team meet every time. You have uh, a cohort-based course and you want to have these uh, pods or subgroups of the participants always meet with the same person. Um, one way to do this before this feature was there was to upload a CSV file to Zoom's website and then um, have people's email addresses added there. But it's really hard if somebody has a different email address uh, than the ones that they use for their Zoom account and it never was able to match it. So this way, if you do it manually in the first breakout room, you can then go to the three dots down here and simply click Save Breakout Rooms. Um, and each user on a Zoom account has up to 10 spots that they can fill with these Save Breakout Rooms. And you can customize a name. So let's say, for example, this one is my YouTube. Actually, let's just call it sneakily, sneakily subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and let me see if I can hit a button here and uh, make sure that you see this. Um, if you're not subscribed yet, this is your invitation. I'll click Save. And now, as you see at the bottom, this breakout room is saved. And I thought in the beginning, okay, great. I will do a couple of other breakout constellations. And then when I click Recreate, this will show up here. But it does not. Uh, here's the thing. Um, all of the constellations get saved in the meeting on the website. So let me actually jump over to show you a couple of things we have to keep in mind when we are using this this feature. So this is me on the Zoom website and I'm scheduling a new meeting. First thing is uh, this feature of saving breakout rooms only works for reoccurring meetings. So if you're creating your meeting, make sure you're checking this box. And I often, again, let me zoom in a little bit more. I often uh, have my meetings set that are reoccurring, but don't have a specific schedule to no fixed time. And that way, whenever I click Start Meeting with that link, it will start and I don't have to uh, have a specific time in mind. I can just start it kind of spontaneously. Um, the next thing, if we scroll further down here, um, and usually the options are hidden. So if we click Show Options, there is this option to Breakout Room Pre-Assign. This is where, what I said earlier, you can import a CSV, you can create rooms, you can add people with their email addresses, 
but now we have this extra drop down menu of selecting a saved breakout room. Right now, it only has the three that I was playing around with earlier. So let me just refresh this page and see if we can find the one that I just created. Uh, this is a test for me too. And there I see it at the bottom. Hold on, uh, need to scroll up a little bit. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I even misspelled it. How fantastic is that? Uh, celebrating um, little mistakes. So if I choose this, click Save. Now in this new meeting, when it starts, I will have a, a recreate breakout room option. Um, if this works, and I have not fully tried this out yet, if this works the same way as some of the other features of pre-assigning breakout rooms, I'll did, uh, I will did actually did a video about this here, which I'll link uh, for anybody who's watching, um, then that means you can only have one saved room per meeting. So again, great feature, but has some room for improvement. How will I be using this? Um, well, if I, I'm actually starting a cohort for my virtual facilitator training tomorrow, today is the last day to register. I'll be uh, dividing people in smaller pods or working groups, home breakout rooms, uh, however you want to call it. It's the same group of people that meets at least once uh, every week. And in the first session, I'll be assigning them automatically. And then whoever gets paired with uh, whomever will be in that group for the rest of the cohort. I'll be saving that breakout room. And every time that we meet, when we get to that one session where it's uh, share the takeaways with your HomePod, I'll be relaunching that breakout room. So all in all, some really amazing features that are now available. Um, still a few things on my wish list, Zoom. So again, if you're watching this, let me know. I can send you some ideas. And if you've been watching until now, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel because I love creating these little video tutorials, figuring out how can we actually use this new technology to create more effective, uh, inclusive, memorable, transformational, meaningful virtual experiences. All right, I will see you soon. Bye.